too. He's decent. Not a little one. confidence in that fly oh that's a nice trout yeah he's not bad heck yeah oh yeah trophy trout but dang he's good hello there everybody it's your good friend Andrew here um, you just saw a clip of some speckled trout action I got in on last week made a quick trip after work I knew the tide was going to be moving in a place where I knew the trout were going to be but uh, anyway showed the fly I was using Okay, it was this craft fur seducer type fly um, tied in the chicken on a chain colors. Might be the most preferred soft plastic color here on the upper Texas coast. But as you can see, you've got a um, kind of a white or pearl belly uh, going into an olive back with uh, some some red specks in it and uh, you have a chartreuse tail and um, anyway I, I had uh, heard a presentation given by I think it was by Tommy Koontz a guide out of Matagorda talking about that chicken on a chain and he said that he thought that the reason why it was so good is the trout were attracted to the red uh, glitter in this um, saying that uh, if you look at a shrimp's eye it shines like that i've been using this fly tied it in those colors and um, and actually this is the exact same fly i was using the other day and i caught all those fish on so you can see it's durable it's ready to go again okay so uh start out with using the gamakatsu B10S stinger hook. Uh, I want to tie this in a one aught because it's bigger and uh, you can see it a little bit better. Then plus, I want to go after some big speckled trout here in a couple of weeks. Just gonna fish for the big ones, but you can tie these in, um, or I tie them. Uh, Anywhere from size four up to one aught. And we go on back to the, about the point of the hook. Now, personally, I don't like marking this fly up. I, I you know, I'll give it bars sometimes with a um, Sharpie type pin but uh, other than that I don't like uh, I don't know I don't like marking it up with a chartreuse but that's an option all right but if I can put those colors in there with the material I'm going to do it okay and this is uh, how I do it 
Um, I put it on the bottom of the fly. Okay. Right there. Alright, I don't think that it's the trout care. You know, you do you have those color combinations and that's what's important. That you at least have the color combinations. They don't have to be in the exact same place. But I'll wrap it on down like that. Okay, and actually I just may just leave it just like that. Okay. All right, what this is, okay, this is the Sanyo's laser dub. All right, now I take my, my extra select craft fur and cream color. As I said in a video before, I'm getting to where I'm staying away from pure white, okay, because I think most true bait fish are more of an off white, and that's why I'm going to the cream color. Really, it probably doesn't matter really doesn't matter it <laughs> probably wouldn't make a difference when you get right down to catching fish um, but uh, what I do is I'll take about a one inch square um, chunk of craft fur here and cut it off alright not a not a big bundle about like that much okay um, you gotta comb that stuff out a lot of under fur in it all right I'll tie it in right there at the very end I'll try to put as much craft fur on here as I can Okay, the length of it, use it all, tie it all up. Uh, this is the largest hook I'll tie these flies on. I'm going to put another bundle of craft fur on here. I had tied one of these once. Actually, I was catching some crappie on one of these one time. A friend was with me. He fishes conventional gear, he doesn't fly fish. And, and I swam that thing for him up close to the bank, let him look at it. You know, and he was really amazed of how good that looked. That fly, I mean, it looked real. The way it was swimming and such. Okay, and again, um, I may taper this thing a little bit, so I want to be sure and get that taper on it. So I'm not going to use as much um, lengthwise. Okay, of this olive so yeah this is the olive craft fur putting on the back of it okay that looks good I'm going to use some red crystal flash here. I'm going to get about two strands of it. Or, you know, I'm going to go with three. Three strands. Okay, I'm going to double it up. And cut it. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this across the back, kind of over offset, not down the middle, but offset from the middle. Okay, I'm going to try not to have them too bunched up so they'd spread out a little bit. And then I'll bring them over. and put it on that same offset, that angle from the, the center. Probably offset it one about 11 o'clock and the other about one o'clock. 
okay and see I've got those sparkles in that back now all right I want to trim this Okay. You can taper them. Uh, I don't think it matters really if you taper them or leave them to full length. Uh, I left these full length. It's okay. You know, fish, I don't think the fish are as picky as we are. But you see how these stand up. Once you start fishing it, it'll, it'll lay down. It'll be fine. Okay. Now what I use is this uh, EP brush, Minnow Head. And this is an Everglades color. And I'm going to be honest with you. The reason why I'm using the Everglades color is because this is just what I have. <laughs> this is the only color that, that I have that blends in well with this with olive. So um, it really works well. It's a good combination. So I'll tie this in and I will palmer this up with open open spirals. Okay, you don't want to get this too, you don't want to wrap this too tight. And I'll go about halfway up the hook shank with this. Okay, right about there. Use your dull scissors to cut this wire. Well, there's wire on here, and it's best if you have a pair of dull scissors, use those. Okay, now I'm going to brush these fibers out a little bit. tasty already okay now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use a olive uh, slapping okay And I'm going to tie this in the rest of the way. And if you want to, for durability, you can dab that with... Uh, Super glue along the way. Okay, now this, I'll, I'll try to wrap this, you know, fairly tight. Or palmer it, I'm sorry, to use the proper terminology. Lick my fingers, try to get uh, some of those out of the way. You don't want to get those little feathers uh, trapped under that thread as you're wrapping. Okay, so now I'm going to push this back 
I'm going to wrap it back to, to kind of lay that, that back some. Lay these little fibers back. Alright, good enough there. this guy cut it off I like using this loon UV alright I used to use a uh, paper glue and, and it's good alright but I don't know something about this loon UV I really like using on these heads right here Got one loose strand of thread right there. Um, maybe I should have cut it off before I did this, but we'll try to do that after I get this cured. Okay, doesn't take much. Now look at that, see the reason why I like using this fly, number one, it's got the profile of a finger mullet. Okay, and number two, it sinks slowly. Okay, I like using slow sinking flies every time of year. Sometimes I, in fact, I probably use it on any, anything. Um, but anyway, it'll, it'll sink slow and just kind of hang. I think those fish, they can't stand that sometimes. Anyway, that's it. Um, give it a try. You know, catch a fish with it. All right. Uh, thanks for watching.